Hey guys, Sprout here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's Diablo Immortal video, I'm going to give you an honest thoughts on the entire game coming from me right now. Now, this is going to be a talking video. I apologise if you're like expecting to see gameplay in the background. I haven't recorded any for this video. I'm just literally going to, you know, have me mop in the background. I, I do it in the back room, you know. It's really hot the other day. I shouldn't really be in here, but whatever. Um, it's just my opinions on everything to do with the game right now, so the good things and the bad things and potentially why you'll not really see us play this on the channel anymore, but it doesn't necessarily say I won't be playing it, but I'm going to get into that regardless. So, like I say, it's going to be my opinions on the overall game experience so far and I am going to touch on the pay to win mechanisms of the game slightly towards the end of the video but I don't want to focus on that because it's not the only thing that's in the game and obviously everybody all already talks about that anyway so it's going to like just be a, a broken record sort of thing repeating what everybody else says but I'm, I'm going to get into it anyway. So a little bit of sort of background of my game time before I get into the video because I see a lot of people doing these review videos and I'm still level 30 or 40 and I'm thinking well do you really know any of the games so currently I've maxed out the battle pass I bought the premium one uh, I'm Paragon 25 so 25 I'm like level 60 plus 25 I'm nearly at hell 2 uh, I'm on a wizard and for the most part like I see I'm free to play other than the battle pass but to tell you the truth you max out the battle pass it gives you two lots of two star gems the gem in question I already had a two star from crafting it, so it's, it wasn't something I couldn't get from being a free to play player. Realistically, a two star, you know, if it gives a five star, fair enough, but that would be too much. But whatever, I've maxed that out. So, for other than that, I did it for the cosmetics. That's that's literally all I've really spent other than the 89p one at the very start that gave you a different cosmetic weapon, which I thought looked good, but then I'd realise I didn't really care for it. But whatever. So I'm going to start off with the good things, the things I actually love about Diablo Immortal. These things that I think, as a free-to-play player, they're just top-notch. Now, the gameplay on the game is absolutely amazing. It's smooth, it's fun to do. I haven't tried every single class to an extent, like I've got them like level 20 or something, but it's still interesting to run into a massive amount of enemies and just, you know, disintegrate them all. You're going to rift and gather loads of things, or even in the wilderness and stuff. It, it's I like the gameplay of the game, and it does give us the Diablo feel on a mobile device, which I'd imagine that is what they were going for. So that part of it, yes, absolutely spot on. Next, the campaign of the game. Now, it's a fill-in between Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, and they bring back familiar faces, and a lot of it's a bit cliche, and like, this this character was uh, popular, so we'll bring her back. Charcy, for instance, even though she's a bit irritating every time you click her, she sees one of three dialogues, but whatever. The campaign itself was very fun to play through. There was a couple of times in certain acts, if you want to call it acts, or parts, that I didn't like. I didn't like the desert area, for instance, with the, the bandits and stuff like that. Now... The Zoltan Cools library and stuff, I was thinking, well, why is that there? Because then we'll go to Zoltan Cools archives as the two separate things in Diablo 3, you know what I mean? And, of course, Leoric, you, you, you kill him in Diablo 3, so does that mean when you kill him in Diablo 2, he doesn't really die and he's still sort of there? Or what's going on there? You know what I mean? It doesn't really make any sense to me, but whatever. It's a popular person, so they brought it back. But the campaign is absolutely... Amazing. I'm not going to do any spoilers for people who haven't played through the whole thing yet, but the ending really ties everything together with Diablo 3 coming after that in the lore. Now, the voice acting in the game, absolutely spot on. They've done a lot of effort on the voice acting. Uh, the male wizard voice I've mentioned on Twitter and stuff was a, an actor that I know quite well from other series, TV series I've watched, so I really enjoyed hearing his voice time I was questioning through. And just some of, a lot of the other ones that they're, they're really well voice acted. It sounds believable that this character will be talking in this sort of way. And lastly, for the good things for me, it's the easiness of actually joining into a multiplayer area. So you, you know, you find an only chest that only four years can open. You can ping people; they come and help us, or you can ask in the shadow chat, the global chat, and people can help you. Very easy to do. Dungeons. 
you can solo some of them or you can just invite friends or you can just search like anybody anywhere and it pings on the, it's very easy to play the multiplayer and I do appreciate that because obviously with Diablo 2, 3, 1 or whatever you can play a solo this didn't have a solo mode as such but you could obviously solo the campaign and stuff certain things you had to do on your own but the easiness of actually jumping into a multiplayer party was very very well optimised at least for me but unfortunately guys I'm going to have to mention some of the bad things about the game some of the things I don't hate but I don't like about the game now the first one I want to mention is the daily end game grind now if you've hit after level 60 like, like me if you're Paragon whatever at first between 60 to 65 or Paragon 5 it's quite fast you can do it relatively easily once you get to 25 I'm literally logging in and nearly leveling up per day with a bit more grinding so I'm basically just doing a daily level up so I get one level per day I'll mention how that happens in a second but I go on I do my dailies I do a dungeon or two unless I spend all day grinding it's just literally these dailies are going to let, let us level up once or more or less once by the time I've done them all now obviously it's an open world game and if you remember back to Diablo 3, 2 and stuff, you get what's called world elites. So you see them on the map, they're the blue names, the yellow names, the red names or whatever. Unique monsters that even a group are on their own and they're in the world. Now, they don't give you anything. The, the, there's no reason for me to go to this yellow mob and spend four times as long as it's got four times or five times the health of a normal mob. There's no reason to kill it. It'll give us some blues or a yellow. Very, very rarely give you a legendary because there's a daily cap apparently. You can't find so many legendaries in deer, which is, you know, just ridiculous. So you can't just run around in circles. You can't kill them as much as you want. You still get experience. You still get, you know, but there's, there's just, there's no chance to it. They're really easy to kill and they don't give you a reward. In Diablo 2, I remember running into elites that had immunity to half me attacks and nearly getting killed by them. And you actually got a unique at the end of it. It was it was actually worth killing them. It doesn't feel worth running around in the open world on Diablo Mortal just to get absolutely nothing. I do the dailies and I go back to town. There's, there's, there's no point in running around in circles. So, world events as well. You get things called side quests. Now... You get an achievement for doing all in a zone. Fair enough. They're, they're a set daily and stuff all the time and you can find different ones. But you can repeat them and they just they, they, they get a bit naff and you get a, they take ages to do some of them and then you get a, a boss at the end that doesn't drop anything. It takes you ages to kill, nearly kills you. And then you get a chest at the end and again will give you crap. It won't give you anything absolutely actually useful. I've not upgraded a piece of my gear in 10 levels because just nothing drops. Uh, and lastly, for the the daily quest, the bounties and stuff, I don't mind. I don't mind going kill 60 of them, 60 of these. It, it fills up the time. But this last one that you think would attribute to that is the bestiary. Now, the bestiary is the Herodric book that you you collect 10 monster essences and then you, you discover a monster or discover a, a, a game character. And it gives you a bunch of rewards and a bunch of experience. But the monster essences drop so infrequently that it's actually mind numbing that you have to get 30 per day now the only drop in the wilderness that don't drop in dungeons that don't drop anywhere else they don't drop in rifts so if you want to farm them you have to run around in circles and just kill the ra <coughs> the random spawns on the map and that I, I i find one probably once every six minutes or something and that's killing things every couple of seconds, you know. There's certain ones as the spiders and stuff that do drop them more often. But once you've got 10 in your inventory, none all drop, which I didn't notice at a time for a while. And I was thinking, it's been like 10, 20 minutes. I haven't had a monster essence drop. And one of my friends was like, oh, well, the, the don't drop after you found 10. You have to go hand it in. So after you've spent half an hour to an hour farming 10 of them, you have to go back to town, hand it in, then go back and farm another 10. And then go back and farm another 10. And it's just... It's one of them things where you don't really get anything from it other than like a couple of yellow items and a little like chunk of experience. It's absolutely pointless. And half the time, when you actually hand it in, it just comes up duplicate page. Like, there's there's 106 pages to do. I've only done 25 or something. How the frig am I getting a duplicate page after grinding for the last hour? It, honestly, it, it it's just, it's getting mind numbing doing three bestiaries per day 
for several hours farming these stupid essences. They need to up the drop rate of them just to make it actually worthwhile farming for them. <coughs> right, I'm going to touch on this one, world bosses. Now, in each zone there's one or two world bosses, which is like, uh, you know, anyone can take part. You can't lock to a certain person. You have to get like a substantial amount of people unless you go up. Kill the undead Zacharim in uh, Mount Zivian. He can be two manned if you, if you just kite him round. But Blood Rose, for instance, is one of them. If you know Blood Rose, you know what I'm on about. If you turn too close to Asher Heels, back to full health. But that's the worst one. But these world bosses, there's no timer on when they appear unless you're in the zone. So a lot of people are missing out on these. They, they drop the Haradrim crystals and stuff. But. There's no indicator where they are, there's no indicator when they spawn, they just sort of seem to be random or, or people can summon them with certain items and stuff. And there's no indicator, like, uh, unless, like, in the chat someone goes, oh, by the way, the, the golem's up or the hydra's up. And then by the time you get them, they're already dead. So I just, I'm missing out on a lot of world bosses because I, I don't know where, where they are, when they are. Now, before I get into the last uh, pay to win thing, I'm going to mention the raids. Now, there's one raid currently, which is LaSalle. Big demon guy. There's not. It's not a raid, it's a boss fight. I don't know why it's called a raid. Obviously, there's eight players you go in. But a raid to me is a bigger version of a dungeon. So you do loads of trash mobs, there's a big boss. And then you do loads of trash mobs, a bigger boss. Then you do loads of trash mobs, and there's a massive boss at the end. This is literally, you walk in, the door shuts behind you, and it starts... You can't even see the boss yet, and he's already firing fire, uh, you know what I mean, trying to kill you. And the mechanics of that said boss are absolutely horrendous. There's area of effect spells he does, which show this area, and it hits around that area, and then you still get hit. There's an AoE that he does that kills you in one shot, you have to hide behind a rock, which doesn't always spawn. So there's a couple of times I've had my whole group wiped because it, it, it didn't spawn a rock. But... I'll be interested to see when they release the next raid boss to see if it's a bit easier or a bit harder, a bit more challenging maybe, maybe because it just seems to be just, just hit him until he dies and it's just literally the boss and that's it. It's just a bit boring to me. The raids are shite. Now, lastly, the peer to win. Um, everything I've just mentioned, if you're peer to win, it, if someone else peer to win, not going to affect you in the slightest. You know, it, you just they might do it a bit faster than you do because they do more damage. That's it. But the PvP, right? I tried, I tried my best to enjoy the PvP as a free to play player. Now, when you're low rank and everybody's low level like you, it's fun, right? It's competitive. It's whoever's got the best skill combinations, the best kiting skills, whoever team works together the best. When you get a bit higher level, you get a bit higher ranked and stuff, and you get the wheels coming in. These are the people who have spent grands, I mean thousands of dollars, thousands of pounds on the game. They've got the high resonance, they've got the decent gems and stuff. They're just running around getting 20, 30, 40 kill streaks without dying at all. And if they're on the opposite team to you, you've lost. There's no doubt about it, you have lost that game if you come against one. And <clears throat> to me, if you're going to add player versus player in a game, the player versus player has to be balanced so that it's a skill issue if you lose, not the richest player wins. I've seen a couple of videos on peer to win players and they're literally just farming the shit out of people, laughing, they think it's great because they can just kill absolutely everybody. It's like going into war zone using an undetectable aimbot. Nobody's got a chance against you. And you find it fun because you're winning. That is what the PvP is like in Diablo Immortal. I love the idea of the attackers, the defenders, the objectives and stuff. But if there's a wheel on the other team, you, you, you don't stand a chance. It's absolutely pointless. There's no reason for a free-to-play player other than putting themselves through three daily PvP matches to get a little bit of experience. There's no reason to play it. There's pointless trying for the leaderboards. Pointless trying for Immortal, pointless trying for Top Shadow Clans, unless you're opening your wallet or your bank account or your credit card or whatever and buying loads of rift runs. And that's all I'm going to see on it. The PvP is not PvP. It's wallet versus wallet. That's literally what it is. There's no player true PvP in Diablo Immortal. Now, 
don't take this video as I'm not playing anymore. I, it sounds like a rant. It's half a rant. It's half a frustration. It's half a, a praise video. Now, I'll continue playing this game till Season 2. We've got 22 days left until Season 1 ends. The next Battle Pass comes out. And if there's no change when the game goes into Season 2, you know, they've ignored the community. They keep the pay to win or they make it even friggin' worse. I'm not playing anymore. I want the game... To remind me of Diablo 2, Diablo 3. And I don't know if Blizzard Activision have done this on purpose. They've put out a really shit Diablo in light of the Diablo 4 announcement. So that when Diablo 4 comes it looks a lot better. Because it might be crap. And they might do the same thing. But that's just all my thoughts on the game right now guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you leave a like and a subscribe down below. But as of now, I'm not going to be making any more content on the game. I don't see the point. I'm not going to do any PvP videos, that's for certain. But I'm going to continue playing. I'm not going to grind out every single daily. But I want to at least try Hell 2 before the end of um, Season 1. If the game doesn't change in Season 2, I'm uninstalling it off my device. Thanks for watching, guys, anyway. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.